You know those days when chaos just takes over? The never-ending traffic, the constant cell phones ringing everywhere, or your boss's non-stop demands. Wouldn't it be great to have a respite from all your chaos? Your very own way to find your freedom? Well, I found a great group of people that have found their hiatus. The New England Aerobatic Club, Chapter 35. And to see them, simply look to the skies above. So, Lise, tell me, when did you first get the fly bug? How long have you been flying in the air? So I've been flying about four years, which really isn't that long compared to most people that are doing this. But, um, and as I was explaining to you before, I basically went out for a ride in a biplane because I was afraid of flying. And then I decided I shouldn't give away my age, but at a certain age, I decided that, okay, it's time to get over this fear. So I went for a ride. The guy did some aerobatics on that first ride. That was the first time I'd ever been in a like small airplane. And um, I loved it, which didn't really surprise me later because I really like roller coasters. And it was it's a lot like that. It's like riding a roller coaster except except without the track. You got obtained your license, and that was about a year. Yep, it took me about a year to get my license. And actually, during that time is when I met my first aerobatic instructor because I went to him for something called unusual attitude training, which is... <laughs> yeah. I think I need well, some well of that. <laughs> Um, it's basically you learn how to control the airplane if you get into a spin or you get turned upside down or oh. something happens. And right. in addition to that, they throw in some aerobatics, which of course I was like, I don't want to do this unless I can do aerobatics. So Good we started doing that. So I started my aerobatic lessons before I got my license. How many other women do you often see out there? <laughs> other fly girls? Not too many. Um, at that first contest, I think there were about maybe 40 or so competitors and two women, I was one of two. That's some serious odds right there. Was Yeah, and there's some contests where there are no women and some contests, you know, usually just me or one other woman. This contest, we have another woman here. Her name is Hella. She's great. She actually kicks all the guys' butts. Like, yeah, Hella! <laughs> I know. We're going to go, yes, Hella. We we're going to root her on. Absolutely. Yeah, she's excellent. She, you'll meet her. She's a retired school teacher. That's amazing to see these teachers, you are like librarians. You never know what they're doing yeah, on their off time. Yeah, you got to keep your eye on them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and they're fabulous, and they're fly girls. <laughs> yep, and I teach too, so I think actually my students get a kick out of that because I'm like, okay, class is over because it's sunny and I need to go fly. <laughs> well, to be honest, I think it's inspirational. I, I think you're a remarkable woman. I'm, I'm darn glad I got to meet you today. What time are you flying? I don't know. They haven't given us the order of flight yet. They draw it at random out of a hat. Oh, they do? Yeah. And then it's an advantage to fly later because you get to watch how the wind affects the other pilots. Oh. So you don't want to be the first one. The first one's called the wind dummy. The wind dummy. Yes. <laughs> so um, they draw it at random and they there's five categories that fly. The most basic one is called primary which is mainly to get people to a contest and get comfortable and the maneuvers are pretty easy. Um, and there, I think there's two competitors in that category here. Um, and then the next category is sportsmen, which is where I fly. Um, and then the next one is intermediate and then there's advanced and then unlimited. So you have five categories and in each category the maneuvers get more and more complex and more challenging, challenging to do and tougher on the body. Um, so it is a it's a workout actually. She was uh, Hella was saying that. Yes, you you will you pull G's where you're accelerating and you end up if you pull five G's, your body weighs five times what it normally does. And there goes the diet. And the <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it comes back. Okay. Thank you. So what happens is the the blood that's in your head wants to rush out of your head, and in extreme situations, people can lose consciousness. Much the same situation that fighter pilots have to deal with. Okay. And your body gets used to it. There's certain things you do. You tighten up your stomach muscles and your leg muscles to constrain all the blood vessels. And you just get used to it from doing it a lot. And what type of plane uh, do you fly? This is called a Kristen Eagle. And um, it's uh, actually made from kits. Um, my plane is 28 years old. It's getting up there, but maintained very well. Um, and it's a, it's a biplane, two wings, they're extra strong, a little more drag, 
so there's always compromises. Are you cold up there? I confess, my plane has heat. Oh, whole big roller right here with Bruce. Most of them do not have heat, so I have that luxury. It's not extra warm, but I'll be in comfort, and right. some of the people will not. But you have the nice care. model. Darn, I would have liked to have gone to a ride in the heated model today. Yeah. So where would people go to kind of learn more information? If there's any contests, they just kind of maybe even want to learn how to fly. There's, a, there's several aerobatic flight schools around. There's actually the sanctioning body, the club for this, is called the International Aerobatic Club, which is IAC.org. And they have on their website a list of uh, aerobatic schools, um, one of which is here. Um, there's an instructor, Bob Sapoli, who's actually the contest director. Um, and that's called Vet Air for a different reason. Um, and there's one at, in uh, Hanscom near Boston, which is Executive Flyers, and that's been around for quite a while. Um, so there's a number of places, and it's just uh, you learn everything one step at a time. When you watch people do this stuff, it seems amazing, but you learn it all one step at a time, and it's not that bad. It's exhilarating to watch. I'm excited to see the contest. Well, good luck in the contest, Bruce. Right. You're going to maintain that number one slot. I know you are. <laughs> We're going to kick butt. How long have you been flying in the air? I've been flying, oh, we can't get into that number. <laughs> like a long time. I've been flying this airplane for five years. That sounds better. Okay, and this is, and this is all yours? Yes, it is. That's amazing. Do you have a name? She's beautiful. No, I don't have a name. My son calls her Whiskey because it's Charlie Foxtrot Whiskey Tango Tango, the phonetic alphabet. That yes, I do know that. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Tay. I know them all. I do. What's your favorite part about flying? I guess the freedom of being able to do whatever you want to do up there. You're not confined to a road or you can go wherever you want and fly whichever direction you want to go. Yeah. And apparently in these contests, you have to remain in this box, this elusive box on the ground. They're very strict. It's very small. The speeds we're going at, you can go through that box very quickly and then you're out of it already and there's penalty points for going out of it. So. Do you have a favorite maneuver? Uh, or is it a secret? She's going to hold off for the big, big show. No, probably the avalanche because it's been my biggest challenge. It sounds good, avalanche. The avalanche? It's a loop and at the top of the loop when you're upside down you do a snap roll and then you finish off the loop. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work so well, but it's not. Now, have you seen Top Gun Hella? Yes, I have. You have? Are you ready for this, Hella? What do you think? That's very good. Am I ready? What do, what do you have here? First place, first place. Nice. Yes. Very this nice. This region is the Northeast and the Mid-America region are the states. You're, con you're conquering global. Ella. That's what you're doing. You're conquering Globa. I love it. All right, I'm going to climb in. Oh my gosh! Dun, 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 dun. Now what do you beautiful plane. It's a Sukhoi uh, 29. It was built in Moscow and uh, uh, it's built in 1993. It has a uh, uh, Venedev uh, radial engine, 360 horsepower. Nice. Um, what's unique about the plane at the time, it, it has a lot of composite co construction in it. Um, the wing is uh, carbon fiber and uh, uh, the aft part of the fuselage is all composite as well. So it's quite a unique airplane the way it's built and the flying characteristics are, are somewhat unique as well to that airplane. It's different from the other ones that are, I'm looking at around here and you sit in the back am I right? Correct you have to solo the aircraft from the rear seat uh, it's for Eagle there we go I learned about that today. Very good very good yes yeah, center of gravity uh, the, the uh, passenger in the front seat or the co-pilot as you will um, they're sitting almost on the center of gravity so the weight of, of 
them sitting in front has very little effect on the CG, whereas the person in the back actually has more of a significant change because it's further away from the center of gravity. And what do you love about it? Why do you keep coming back? You know, it's it's obviously fun, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. But you know, the, the people are, are what makes you come back. Yeah. The people are very nice. Uh, I'd like to think that most of these people are my friends and I uh, uh, enjoy seeing them and getting together with them whenever we have a contest. They, they, everyone here has been so friendly and everybody's outgoing. I like that. Yeah. Oh, and see, yeah. you just fueled up. You're fueling up now. I am fueling up now. Nah. Do you have a special rewards card or anything, like for gas points or anything? I mean, cause uh, I, no. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it, how much fuel it takes. Well, you know also that, that um, as being an aircraft owner, you're privileged to pay more for gasoline than you would for your car. <laughs> oh, so, see, that's nice. Uh, I don't know what they are charging these. Days. What's the fuel cost today? Uh, about, about five, about five fifty, five fifty a gallon. Did you just say five? Is that regular? <laughs> yeah, that's regular. Yes, there's a. Yeah, yeah. I am uh, original from Italy and uh, I live in Montreal but uh, I keep my plane in northern Vermont so it's very northern Vermont airport uh, very close to the border border with Canada yeah. I have to say I've been hearing a lot about you that you are uh, quite the competitor here you're ready to take it by storm today yeah, yeah no it's uh, well yeah I, I have to say I am a competitive person <laughs> I have to admit that very nice in the sense that uh, I try to do my best, Th this is true, yes. And also I practice a lot, you do. because basically this is uh, uh, pretty much 100% uh, of my free time mm -hmm. I spend uh, practicing aerobatics. And this is your plane right here, right? Yes, this is my plane, it's a 1986, Cri 1986 Christen Eagle. Oh, yes. Yes, it's uh, supposed to be a kit plane, but this particular plane was... Uh, the kit was uh, bought by a gentleman who is from uh, San Francisco area. Okay. And at that time, the company, Christian Industries, was in Hollister, California, very close uh, uh, where the gentleman is from. So he made the decision to hire two employees of the company mm -hmm. who uh, basically assembled the, the plane for him. Nice. So it's a, a kit plane, yes and no. Is a does sort it have a name? Well, this plane does not have... You know, a, like a, a personal name. No, I, do, no. I, I didn't give the, this plane a personal name. No. But uh, I often refer to this plane as my hot Californian girl. Shut the front door. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yes. Your hot California girl. See, yeah. what position number are you hoping for? Well, usually you don't want to uh, fly at the beginning because okay. this allows you to study what are the conditions mm -hmm. so you can watch the, uh, how the other competitors are flying and try to understand what is going on in terms of wi wind right. and what is going on with their positioning. Okay. So if you see that there is a lot of crosswind which mm. is pushing, for instance, uh, all the competitors away from the the judge line yes. so you you can try to take advantage of that oh. and when you fly to correct your position because it's uh, the, at the end the final score is a combination yes I, I heard that you fly mm -hmm. the uh, single figures but also how you assemble together the sequence in inside the the, the box and this is uh, referred to presentation uh, score. Very nice. Well, I hope you have a wonderful presentation well, score. And well, Bob just came over and offered me a, an opportunity to volunteer some time. I'm going to be uh, at the judges' table <coughs> up oh. there. If you, you, you know, if you want to grease some palms or something, you know, yeah, I well might I put in a good. <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Francesco, the best of luck to you today. Okay, Thank so you. Long. Okay. Ciao. ciao.
Then I pop my belly. Do I massage? So, I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm getting ready for a ride of a lifetime with Bruce, my captain. He's told me that the plane will, uh, will definitely get off the ground. I'm not sure. It reminds me of an Indiana Jones episode, personally. But that's all right. I'm up for the challenge. I can handle this ride. It doesn't look like that much of a beast, does it? It's all right. I I I'll handle it. Connie, Connie, the plane's, the plane's over here. We're it's not, not that one? No, we're not going up in that one. Oh, all right. No one goes up in that one? No one goes up in that one? No. What kind of plane is that? That's a Piper Cub, but that hasn't flown in this century. Well, that's good news because I was really kind of scared. So this is the plane? This is the plane. This is a much better plane. Yeah. This plane's much better. Can yeah. you tell me about your plane? This plane is called a Christian Eagle, and uh, this is a home-built plane. It was built by a gentleman in Nevada and it was built from kits and um, this was really the first of the kit planes and it, it was a very complete kit um, and this plane is mostly made for doing aerobatics um, it's not made for traveling or looking at the countryside it's for aerobatic flying and that's what we're going to do today okay like loops and whirls oh and cubans and half cubans am i right yes we're going to do we're going to start out doing a barrel roll we're going to do some inverted flight where you'll be Hanging by the seat belt straps. Really? Uh, yeah. Upside upside, upside down? Yes. Upside down. Is there a bag that might be available for me in case no. I... You're not going to use any bag. You're going to be a trooper. I'm going to be a trooper. Yes. All right. I, I'm going to be a trooper. I guarantee you won't need a bag. All right. You know what? I'm ready. I'm ready. For, I have the need for speed. Do you have the need for speed, Bruce? I do. All right. Let's go to it. So this is a parachute. It is. Now, if, if I'm not jumping out of the plane, Bruce, I, I'm kind of curious why I need a parachute. It's a, just in case, but... Really? Yeah. They it's say that you have a better chance of winning the lottery, winning the lottery uh, as if you were going to the... No, wait, that doesn't make sense. They say you have a better chance of winning the lottery, going to pick up your prize winnings and getting killed by a car than you do winning the lottery. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. This is nervous. Chat, uh, chatter. Yes, see? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. These guys are laughing at me. Straps up a little. I'm really nervous. No. This is the ripcord. Okay? <laughs> okay. You don't want to pull this when you're in the airport. Okay, no, no pull what. that. Got it. In the event of an emergency, okay, I will say bail out. And I'll say it three times. Why three? Just to Once sure. is enough. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the sort of thing I'll joke about. Right. And I'm, after three times, I'm taking my headset off, so there won't be any more conversation after that. Okay? Uh -huh. The um, What will happen next is I'm going to undo my seat belts, and I'm going to reach over, and I'm going to undo your seat belts. Okay. I'm going to take your headset off, and I'm going to grab this strap right here and pull you out of the airplane. So you're going to take care of me? Yes. Thank God. I'll pull your ripcord. Now, if you, okay. if you hear me say bail out, yep, you then I do your seatbelts. That will save us help some you time. Out. But we need I'm that. not counting on you doing that. So okay. I'll take care of that. Um, <clears throat> and I have a lever. I pull that. The canopy is out of the way. And then we'll jump out. Pay attention. Trifecta. Once you get it on, you want the 
this to be right up against your lips. This. Yeah. Okay. And you just talk, and this <coughs> turns on the intercom, and then I can hear you. Okay. Nobody else can hear you. Is there any time I need to be quiet, like when you're talking to the tower or anything, that I'll know that just shut up, Connie? It's even embroidered. This parachute's going way back. You do? All right, we are set. We are set. We are set. Oh. Close the canopy. Okay. All right. We're recording. Do I, uh, We're recording on the GoPro. Wait, two from Alpha. Click for takeoff. Yeah, She's on course. Call Mike. Thanks. We're going to have to wait for this guy to land. Oh, I gotcha. And There we are. 
Espera. Life is meant to be lived, and we sometimes forget that when we're coping with traffic and stressful environments. Finding your very own respite to calm your soul and make you feel grounded again is different for all of us. Whether it's a day on the water or an afternoon flying through the air, never forego an opportunity to find your freedom. The next time you're stuck in traffic, take a breath and look up. Your freedom awaits you. Enjoy your journey as you find yours. Until next time, this is Connie. And thanks for joining us on Poppin'. How do you do? So, he's got his eye on you. He's going to take you down. Not literally, though. This is just too much fun. I think I want to learn how to fly. Wait, I need my glasses. All right, forget the glasses because it's a blooper. <laughs> Look at my hair. Uh, upside, upside, upside down. Upside down. Is there a bag that might be available for me in case I... I'm going to be a trooper. All right. I'm going to be a trooper. He's going to upstate me. I love it. This is nervous. Chat. Yeah, chatter. Yes. See? Yes. <laughs> of an emergency. Okay. I will say, bail out. I will say it three times. Why three? Just Once sure. is enough. <laughs> I have a lever, I pull that, the canopy is out of the way, and then we'll jump out. Now, in Top Gun, Goose hit his head on the thing when it went back. I'm not gonna, that won't happen because it'll fly right off, right? Right. Okay, good. See, they modified it since the they learned from Goose. Yes. Okay. So. Francesco, it was a pleasure talking to you. Can you say Poppin' in the Pioneer Valley with that fabulous accent? What I have to say? <laughs> say it again. Poppin' in the Pioneer Valley. Poppin' in the Pioneer Valley. Love it. That's so nice. Francesco, the best of luck to you today. Okay, Thank you. Okay, ciao. Ciao.